Hello everyone, Toby from Ableton Drummer here. A new device, a new Max for Live device for the SPD-SX, especially if you're using the SPD-SX to trigger different sounds in one drum rack and you have those drum racks um, chained in an instrument rack you sometimes get lost like where did I put some samples or if you're filling in for another drummer or if you want someone else to fill in for you um, really quickly to adapt to your set to your Ableton Live set and to remember where which sounds were be stored or are currently activated this device is really great so quick overview of what it can do would be you have different drum racks in chains and you are using the chain selector to select the different chains. You can see when I'm moving my uh, chain selector here going to this chain second song, you can see low kick and clap and those both samples are being shown here, all the sample names. If I move the chain selector, oops, uh, if I move the chain selector to a different kit, different drum rack you can see fat kick fat snare fat kick fat snare are being shown in here so this way you can navigate quickly through a set you don't know or you are rehearsing for the new show or you just like needs to remember yourself uh, because you're playing in so many different projects whatever really good way to have this in a pop-up uh, window here which you can actually have on top of your Ableton live set so if you need to remember things you can look quickly oh uh, where was the sound okay so let's go um, through this for the people who don't know the whole chaining technique so if you know this already just skip this chapter so I just explained this so if you're triggering sounds in Ableton live via an SPDSX you're routing the MIDI into this track here and you are having like those sounds being sampled set to a certain pitch obviously which needs to match the MIDI pitch of the pad you want to trigger it with. So now if you want to change those uh, sounds and you don't want to create another track and another track and another track for each different sound preset here you can actually group drum racks. So this would work via right click and select group or it would be command G as a shortcut and then you can open up the chain view in this instrument rack. Now you have a drum rack nested in an instrument rack. So let's name this first drum rack just to make sure we remember what we did. And so now you can see the name of the chain here in the beginning changed. So now we want to have a second drum rack with different sounds for um, second song for example. So what you can do is for example uh, if you have the drum rack set already you can uh, load it in here. I just pull another one in here and now you can see we have two of those and if I select um, the first one you can see there are sounds in here. On the second one there are no sounds set yet so let me quickly import some random sounds here just to make sure I'm just gonna use some stuff here and just name it so uh, another kick maybe another kick and just use the same one just for showing purposes um, because we don't care about the sounds we care about the names at the moment okay so so now we have um, another drum rack. So we got two drum racks now with two different sounds, presets, um, sample presets as well, in on the same track. So now we want to make sure when to select to the next one. So you can open up the chain view, ta da, and you will have a chain selector on the top. And you can define regions for the certain chain. So now I define the second uh, chain here to value 1 and the first one is on value 0. So now if you put in MIDI and the chain selector is selecting value 0, 
the MIDI only goes into the first chain as this one is here, this region is selected here. If I move the ch chain selector one up, the second chain will be selected. So only the, the MIDI will be only routed to the second chain, meaning only your second drum rack will be played here. So this is the whole technique. Um, if you have further questions about that, I do online teaching as well. If you need help in setting this up or just to, for understanding this, get in touch. Um, cool. So let's say we already have this set up. Um, example track here. So I have first song, second song, third song in an instrument rack and I have the chains set up here already. So you can see the names are moving in the pop-up window. So how, wh how do you, what do you need to do to set this up? So first of all, you need to put in the plugin in front of, or anywhere, it could sit anywhere actually, in your Ableton Live set. Uh, would be cool to have it setting in front of here. There is uh, one advantage. Um, I will show you in a second. So you can open up the window, the pop-up window. You can place it anywhere you want. You can press S for saving the position. So now the position when you're opening up your Ableton Live set will be stored here. Um, or if you more, uh, if you like stuff having more on this side here, put it here, press S. So in some use cases, um, you might have a problem with the window showing up at a wrong position. For example, if you choose, used two um, monitors on your computer in, uh, in in your studio and then you're live and you only have one monitor, the, the window might be sitting somewhere weird. So um, you can always press reset windows position here and it will move to a preset windows position just in case the window is not showing up. So you have the trigger inputs here as well. If you're using external triggers, you can set them up here as well. Okay, so first of all, what, what we do need to do is we need to actually let this plugin know what kind of MIDI notes, MIDI note pitches you're sending from your SPDSX. So um, you need to go into note in map. And here you have for each pad and for the triggers as well, you have a um, note field you need to switch on if you want this active. So if you're using your um, bottom left pad here, you want to switch this on and let the plugin know which MIDI pitch is coming in from your SPDSX on this field. So for example, it could be a C1 or whatever. You can just put it in here and uh, type it in here or you could press S as well. So now um, it, it wants to sync. So that's why S, the letter S is there. So now it's blinking and it's waiting for you to hit your pad. So the MIDI pitch will be detected detected automatically the MIDI pitch which is coming in from this pad you're hitting next. So if you hit your pad now, bomb, it's going to get detected. And this way now C1 is being turned on for this pad to be recognized and to grab all the names which are in your drum racks on the C1 pitch. Yeah, so C1 is down here. So now if I leave the note and map menu, you can see fat kick is being grabbed, the name is being grabbed. So let us do this for some more fields here. So for example, if you have um, the snare sitting here, you turn this on, um, you train the snare sounds, which are usually on D1, it's a general MIDI mapping standard. And we have one more, I think it's on F three, we F one, we have a shaker here. So let's quickly set this one maybe to F one done. Okay, so now, if we leave the note in map menu, you can see depending on which chain is currently selected. Oops, which chain chain is currently selected, select the chain selector, I move the chain selector here now. So now, First song is selected. We have fat kick and fat snare names being shown. So move the chain selector to the value one. 
we can see shaker low kick and clap are being selected okay so obviously um you need to map the device so when you open it up it will look like this and and there is no connection being made from the plug-in to a, an, an instrument rack where all your drum sounds are sitting in in nested drum rack so what you need to do is you need to make a connection for this plug-in to the device so this means um, you just um, you can place the device anywhere if you want it on another track and then just map this to the right drum rack uh, instrument rack I mean so you do this via pressing map here and now you need to select a MIDI mappable parameter in this field so for example I just took this uh, volume uh, control here um, you could use let's open the macros for example you could press map now it's mapping it says it's not mapped just click on the macro here and it detects the um, ID of this instrument rack here so now it's mapped you can see this as well as the name here is showing up down below here so if we change the name for example um, all drum sounds maybe all drum sounds bomb needs to be remapped to catch the name again so let us remap this so I press map it's blinking it's waiting for you to map something so let's touch this macro here and you can see that all the different no not all the different just the name of this instrument rack is now showing up here the same for the names works with um, the scenes here as well uh, chains here as well so if my chain selector is on value zero you will see the value of the chain selected down here so if I move this up you can see it's now one it's two and the same works for the chains here as well so one important thing it will the plug-in will only work the max for life device will only work if you set it up the chain uh, and the chain selection this way so this always like the first chain will be always um, needs to be on value 0 the next one on value 1 the next one on value 2 and so on and so forth so um, this is really important it will only work this way yes so um, if you move the chain selector too far bomb you will get a notification here current chain selection exceeds number of chains so we have value 4 and uh, no, value 3 here selected and we don't have any um, chain selection or we don't have four um, chains here we only have three so it's zero one two and the, those are the values for the first three chains and then we selected value three and we don't have four chains here so this might be a bit confusing if you're starting out with that but look it up you know it's just like zero one two instead of one two three okay cool <coughs> what else do we have to cover um, you can actually monitor in the plugin as well if MIDI is coming in so um, for example if you have uh, drums being played so I'm just using my computer keyboard here you I'm putting in a C1 now and you can see this one is monitoring because it receives a uh, C1 now same goes for the D1 and for the F1 here as well so maybe if you're using something and you want uh, is, is the MIDI coming through you can see yes the MIDI is coming through but sounds will be only played if you have sounds in here so now the shaker will be will be triggered the shaker sound but if you're on um, the first chain your kid first song um, for example you wouldn't get any sound but you would still get a signal here a monitoring signal that you are actually putting in an F1 here you can switch off the uh, blink monitor I call it so if I now um, have this deactivated you can see even if I'm playing the different MIDI note pitches 
um, nothing is blinking here let's turn it on again yes okay so I think this is a really cool device for um, quick finding your way around in um, a really big stacked uh, instrument rack with a lot of drum sounds a lot of drum racks or especially if you need to do something quick and you need some sort learn something quick adapt to an Ableton live set really quick or to a show and just being able to monitor like okay uh, where were the samples I can't remember in song 50 for example where were those okay cool um, yes you can get the device um, via ableton.com it's a max for life device you will need max for life which is included in the Ableton Live suite version or can be bought as an add-on to uh, Ableton Live standard and there is a link in the video description uh, just follow this and uh, check the device out cool nice one